What's going on, everybody? I am excited for this conversation that is about to happen today. Now, you know, before I go into the bio, man, I just want you to know that this this dude right here is um, a legend in the making. You know, so there's a backstory, and that's why I have to say that because I know he deny it. You know, I we we he has put some of us that he has went to school with. I would say on an undeserved pedestal. And while I am, you know, uh, um, flattered, listen, my man got a book out, y'all. This is what we're talking about today. We we're talking about Elroy Byam's book and Every Day. Now, there is a subtitle to that. He's going to tell you the entire subtitle, but it's called And Every Day, pulled from a story spine structure that he um, adopted, what, 12 years ago. So, um, ah, man. And the way that he has crafted this thing is great. So, Els, we are going to do this Oprah Winfrey style, man. We're just going to pull some pieces from the book without giving out, of course, you know, the entire thing. Yeah. And what I forgot to do, so you drop drop it to me in um in our chat, in our chat backstage, drop me the link. And I'm going to add that into the thing so they can just click on it on Amazon and just, yeah, just, just work it out, at least for, for Facebook for now. Okay. Cool. So, so do that for me. Okay. So for those of you that don't know Elroy Byam, you need to know that he's a producer, he's an ideator, he's a creative consultant and a visual storyteller who's been working in the media industry for over eight years. <clears throat> Elroy, I'd say over 10, because you've been you've been doing this thing since <laughs> since we were in school. Um, he believes in a world where people can develop healthier relationships with their work and others if they just take more time for self-reflection. Now, this is why he's on today, because he's an author of the recently published book and every day, How to Discover or Rediscover Yourself in Your Story. And so through this book, he hopes that people can find themselves find their gifts, and then, I think this is the linchpin right here, find a community to share them with. Els, thank you, man. I, I appreciate you being here. This is this is going to be one for the books of time to record one day and look back and be like, oh yeah, that did happen. Hey, keep remember me when you you know when you become a New York Times bestseller and all oh, of that. Just, on, just, just remember Please. humble little me. All right, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna be right there if not first. So uh, you know, first off, hey, you, you hey hey, I, I said it before. You don't want to got the book out first though. I'm just saying. That. So yeah. so you know, <laughs> Fair enough. but um. Listen, so so just just pray that our Wi-Fi connection stays strong. I think yours is good. Mine is a little rough. So for those of you that see a delay, just please rock it out with us. Be patient. Um, grateful for you guys tuning in. So, okay. Here we go. Oh, oh, Denise. Denise is another one. So we don't have to get Denise soon too. Okay, El, so before you begin, first of all, y'all need to know that I'm not like the traditional, uh, I guess, interviewer type. So it may seem like I'm kind of scatterbrained, but I'm not. So just because Denise chimed in right now, you know what I realized, Elroy? Let me tell you what I realized, and then we're really going to get into what we're talking about today, but this is tied into it. A large part of our story deals with the other supporting characters, which you talk about in your book, um, who we surround ourselves with. Um, and who we surround ourselves with, if you if you're like the, you know, surround yourself with five people, then you're going to be the sixth one to do what the, the sum total of those people are that you're around. Yeah. I know at least four right now that have written books. You and Denise is, is two of those four, maybe yep. five. So I'm just saying, I think it's about it's about that time. Just say, you know, you know, you you around authors eventually become an author, you know, an entrepreneur. You become an entrepreneur. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. No. So, but anyway, let's let's really get into this thing because I don't want people to tune out because <laughs> they're not here for me, but they're here for you. Mm -hmm. So, okay, what what brought you to even want to write this book to begin with? So talk about it just for a little bit. We're gonna dive into it, but. Tell, tell us, tell me, tell the, the rest who are watching, yeah, why'd you do it? Uh, yeah, first of all, uh, what's up, everybody? Hi, Denise, how you doing? <laughs> um, I think the reason why I, I wrote this book, honestly, and I was trying to dial it back, and I think it goes all the way back to my childhood, uh, probably to very close around this time of year, around kindergarten. So at the end of my first uh, semester of kindergarten, I was taking first grade math, right? And every day um, in kindergarten, I would go up to take first grade math. And uh, after the end of the semester, uh, the principal uh, at the time goes to my mother and says, hey, you know, uh, we believe Elroy, you know, could pretty much finish the rest of the year in first grade. And so my mom comes to me and says, hey, you know, are you willing to leave 
you know, your friends in kindergarten, leave, you know, everything that you know and consider normal to go up and finish uh, the rest of the classes in first grade. And so I said, yes, sure. And so for the second part of that year, I um, am in first grade, but for some reason, I still feel like I'm in a place where I don't fully belong. And so I feel like I'm trying to catch up mm. and the kids are there and they're yeah. like, you're only what, five or you're only six and they're seven, right? And so as the years uh, would go on, as I would you know, increase in the grades, they'd be like, you're only nine, we're 10. You're only 12, we're 13, you know? And so I always yeah. felt like I was yeah. in a place where I was catching up to the people around me. And so uh, I think it was uh, just a, a certain level of insecurity uh, telling myself, hey, all right, you're not enough. All right, you gotta catch up. Uh, uh, all right, you need to do something big just to be a part of this space. And uh, mm. and so I started to write. That was part of my emotional release. Um, you know, I, I yeah. write journals, poetry, and you know, we connected uh, through poetry in college. Uh, so I just started yeah, yeah. Connecting through writing. And I knew one day, mm. um, I was like, man, I wanna write a book. I want to write a book. Um, that'll be my thesis to the world, and it's going to be about relationships. And then, Chris, I got married and realized I knew absolutely nothing about relationships. <laughs> I remember <laughs> this. I remember this at school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? I, that, that book is still not out. I know nothing to this day. I've been married for over seven years. I know nothing about relationships. So, <laughs> yeah, arguable, working. but I get you. I get you. <laughs> Uh, but what I did that, that, that's actually the book title, by the way. That's the book title right there. I know nothing. <laughs> that's true. And I, and I still don't. But uh, no, to be honest, because what I, I believe I did know was about storytelling. You know, I'd be behind a camera at college documenting the situation, uh, you know, yeah. creating the characters, uh, you know, within the narrative for whatever event we were at, um, whether it was throughout the week or the weekend. And so I thought, hey, you know, we're all, we always have a role to play here in our story. We're always a character in our story. And now I work in media, it's the same thing. It's, it's storytelling for the audience and you know this very well. Mm. And so what I started to notice, I'm a huge observer just in the macro. I don't like to be in the weeds and you know, all that stuff. I'll, yeah. I like to look at things from up high, right? And I'm just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. why do people nowadays, they just seem really angry, they're frustrated, their anxieties at an all time high, depression's mm -hmm. at an all time high. Social media usage, usage is increasing. Yeah. And I realized, oh my goodness, I think somehow with the increase of social media, with the increase of all these messages, with the increase of us feeling insecure, we don't really know who we are. And uh, through all that, yeah. I had to admit to myself, in me trying to always catch up to people, always uh, trying to storytell, always trying to figure yeah. out um, who I am and where I am, I just might be lost. And I said, all right, mm. you know what, you're lost. You need a timeout. You need to get away from everything that you consider normal, every part of your everyday mm -hmm. culture, and you need to go figure out who you are. And it's going to upset family. It's going to upset friends uh, because you are turning your culture over on its shoulders to go out and, mm -hmm. and truly understand who you are in your narrative. And so this is pretty much what the book is about, uh, mm -hmm. getting you from a lost uh, place to a found place and you having to do that messy work in the middle. Yeah, that messy work in the middle, you know, so so started reading it and I totally forgot that we were both architecture majors. How did I forget this? You know, mm -hmm. so one of the reasons why I'm writing, why I have to write things out is because I will forget. Like my memory is terrible. And then I will forget to even review the stuff that I've written down. So I'm in the season right now that I'm, I'm just sharing this stuff out, you know, right. because if I don't... Uh, it, they're going to be lost treasures or lost solutions to problems that I've already figured out. And, you know, this idea of you feeling like you've been behind schedule for quite some time, I think pushes a lot of us, especially to become high achievers or just to, to, to probably move faster than we have been designed to. And you talk about this in the book, being in places that we weren't really designed to be in. So talk about that a little bit. You kind of touched on it with social media. Dive in just a little bit more. How do we expose ourselves or, or in a sense, um, immerse ourselves in, in environments that we weren't meant to be in for, for long, but yet somehow we have shaped our entire day around those kind of uh, hyper attention grabbing environments. Speak on that because I think you really do a great job in the book. Thanks, man. Well, first, you know, uh, I think Winston Churchill said it before, like we shape our buildings and then they shape us. Uh, so, mm. you know, we, we, we yeah. start to build these environments and we dream about these environments and then and they're good for a moment. Yeah. But 
after a while they start to shape us. And I like how you said dive in earlier because I'll allude to just that uh, in the book in chapter one, I, I loosely touch on um, James Cameron, uh, huge film director, did the Avatar series, right. Titanic. And yeah. you know, he was in love with uh, just like water and deep sea space exploration. And I, I remember, mm -hmm. I think it was several years ago, he goes into uh, the, the Challenger Deep within the Mariana Trench, this just large chasm over um, in the Pacific yeah. Ocean. And as you know, at some point, if you dive, right? At some point, if you're free diving, at some point, mm -hmm. the culture of the water becomes so much that within your own human capacity, like you can only withstand so much pressure. Yeah, it's crushing right? in, yeah. And so Cameron realizes this and he has to go through a, you know, a series of training, mm. training for months just to get his body, mm. mind, and even the machine that he takes down far enough to do some deep uh, sea exploration. But well, that's the issue. The, yeah. the very at the very bottom of the ocean, right? The deepest part of the ocean, it you know, it's mm -hmm. probably gorgeous. You're probably gonna come across creatures you've never seen before, but at the same time, it's mm -hmm. pitch black. And the weight of it, just wow. the sheer weight of it, um, would crush yeah. you within seconds if you were exposed Oof. to that environment. This is what has happened with that next frontier, which has been uh pretty much the information age, the internet age. Um, I've been on yeah. Facebook since 2005, and I remember you know at college, I was able to go between the pages of the total amount of people at our university within two pages, two to three pages. There are only about yeah. 20 something yeah. other people <laughs> at our university on Facebook. That's at unimaginable. Crazy, bro. <laughs> right. I remember it's in 05, yeah. I'm here clicking, and people were just so polite. They were like, hi, how are you? Uh, <laughs> nice to meet you, right? Like, you're, you're not oh, look, folk, folk don't do that anymore, man. They just <laughs> add you, it, and that's man. it. You may never talk to you for the rest of your life, bro. And yeah, yeah. We had, so we had a .edu address. The early age of exploration was beautiful. There was a level of wonder to Facebook. There, there was a level yeah. of exploration. What is this thing about? Mm. How many new people yeah. can I meet? They removed the .edu address and all these other people now start coming in. Marketers, mm -hmm. grandma, elder so-and-so, mm -hmm. sister so-and-so. <laughs> and next thing yeah. you know, you are bombarded now, not even just with your colleagues, I've got to do more homework, mm. but now you're dealing yeah. with the stressors of uh, your, your parents, uh, people from your church, uh, people from your right. work organization. And now the pressure, uh, mm. our minds have not been built to be able to take in so much pressure every day. However, we've right. become addicted to this space. And so, you know, we wake up early mm. in the morning and some of the first things we scrub through before we go to bed at night, some of the first, uh, some of the last things we'll scrub through. This is huge yeah. investment in other people's stories deep, deep, deep into this data driven sea but not mm -hmm. realizing that we don't have the human capacity to stay there for long. And it is killing us, bro. It's, it's literally killing us. Absolutely. That's why everybody's absolutely. Upset. That's why everybody's like, <laughs> I don't know who's on my side. I don't, I don't know who I can trust. I don't, but it's too much. It, it's, it's, it's just way too much. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I had to admit that for myself, you know, that mm. even though, you know, I do love people and I, and I naturally try to get along with people um, as best as I can. At some point I realized yeah. I no longer had the capacity within me and without me to maintain all a certain level of relationships with a large group of people. That's, it's a lot of intimacy. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah. I just have to admit I was lost. <laughs> I think, I think to an extent, a lot of us can be, I, Hey, listen, so I got back on Facebook intentionally to do more, um, leaning into the gift that, you know, that uh, I've, I've subscribed to. And a large part of that deals with having to connect with people yeah. and share my truths, share whatever wisdom that I have. Bruh, I was tempted. I downloaded Facebook on my phone like three days ago. And I said, mm -mm, mm -mm, nope. <laughs> I had to delete the joint, bruh. I had, I had to yep. delete that joint. Listen, yep. um, I only get, now Now Messenger is a little, you know, Messenger is a slippery slope. It's just, that one's a little tricky, but I can only check Facebook notifications on the desktop. Like that is my safeguard, bro. Fair enough. I can Fair only, um, same thing with uh, like with LinkedIn as well. Like I'm trying to now just create a physical space, so to speak, where I have to come to my computer, sit down and then be exposed to all of the messages and connections and all of that. And then kind of in a sense, check out to an extent. Cause I mean, there's only so much that we can do, you know, with our, with our phones, but you're right. We aren't designed for this, uh, uh, this, bum rush of just not just people their voices but just information and now misinformation yeah it's a lot for us yeah. to be able to process it's almost as if we have not been designed for en mass relationship connecting 
It's weird though. You would think that that's what we were supposed to be designed for, but it's not. Um, right. I think you talk about it in the book where it's the same slice of pizza, but instead of it now being eight slices or the same pie, instead of it being eight slices, it's now 32 cheese strips. Yeah. You have, okay, listen, hey, listen, man. For, for those of y'all that don't know Elroy, <coughs> I'm reading this book and I hear his, I hear his voice. Like that's that's part of why I think I read Slug. I hear his voice as I'm reading it. And I'm like, the cleverness is there. Very scientific as well. Like not to the point that you can't understand it, but bruh, I didn't know that you knew about Adobe 99U conferences. Like who who knows about that kind of stuff, man? I, I'm just like, bruh. Like, you know, so anyway. <laughs> I say that y'all need to get it. Yeah, like this, this is I'm shamelessly plugging him in. Like y'all need to get the book, especially if you enjoy wit and just, um, uh, uh, yeah, man. I, there's so much. There's so much in there. Uh, you talk about you talk about Simon Sinek. You have to start with why, but in your preface, you're like, but I'm ending with it. Ah, so much good stuff. Okay, so you say that this is not a self help book. It's a self discovery book. Why is that? Um. You know, because I believe in I believe in healthy escapism. I believe, look, after you have a long day of work, you know, I think it's okay yeah. to wind down. You know, I talk about that in, in one of the chapters as part of my seven W's in terms of how I would, in a perfect world, how I'd like to move through the day. Um, so I believe yeah. in escapism. However, uh, you know, self help works. I think up until a certain point, um, you know, because mm -hmm. then at some point I think your appetite is still asking for more. But self discovery, to me, it yeah. it's literally saying you are here. You are at this particular part of your journey. You're at this particular part of your story, and you need to go from point A to point B. You need to continue that mm -hmm. story. And if you don't move, if you don't take the work uh, to really discover who you are, you're going to project that on every other character in your story, um, whether mm -hmm. they're there to assist you or whether they're there to block you. So um, yeah. to me, and I still believe that's this very day, self-discovery and self-awareness is super important. And it's something that you know I try to practice often, even when I'm in my own uh, stressful moments. So yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and you know what you you say, listen, don't read this book if and it, it was it's kind of I like the fact that you have like these three categories of, you know, don't read it if you know everything, don't read it if you're totally in tune and aware about who you are and <clears throat> don't read it if you just don't care about life. <laughs> That's a, you know, and yeah. so so there's a bit of reverse psychology but at the same time it's it's genuine truth because you can't value the book if you're a know-it-all. If you're right. an understand it all, if you're a not at all, right? It's right. just and so what would you say to the person who is the I'm totally in tune with who I am, I am aware, but I don't know if another tool, we'll get to that, another how to is really gonna help me. What do you say to that person? I'm aware, but I'm skeptical someone else now who's trying to tell me something about myself, even though I'm secure, I believe I'm secure in who I am. Uh, what do you tell that person? I mean, hey, you know, I'd probably tell them the same thing I tell a super buff guy at the gym, right? Hey, you may not need, you may not need to be there, but shout out to you being there, right? Like, like they've yeah. done the work, you know, and they're showing everybody they've done the yeah. work. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah. they're still there, uh, not just to continue to, well, to one, maintain, but also build yeah. upon that frame. And so, you know, for those who found you know themselves, congratulations, like that's the space that I, I want to be in. I want to revel in and pull people from mm. that broken space into a, a, a healed or at least a better space, if you will. Um, not a healer. Right. That's not my work. But uh, I, I, yeah. I would tell them, hey, you know, at least take a peek at it, throw away what you've read over and over mm. again. And then, there, but there may be at least a sentence or a statement in there that might speak to you or somebody that uh, you know may need it in that moment. And so, yeah. I absolutely agree. You know, I think that not many of us take the literal framework of storytelling. There, there are a few, there are a bunch, there are a lot that are out there right. and apply it like literally apply it into like infuse it into our lives. I don't think many people do that, even if they're aware, you know? So for those of you who do feel like you are, I would still say at least take a, yeah, check, check it out because it's going to challenge how, even though you are aware of yourself, are you aware of your narrative? Mm. 
Mm. Those are two different things. I think that we need to start separating our stories from being the protagonist in the story because our story is greater than us. Even mm. though we are supposed to be the hero in the story, and you talk about that a lot, you know, you put it in all caps, like, "Hey, you, you are the hero." Yeah. So you then talk about this idea, oh man, where you say one of the reasons why we're lost. You say that we've established ourselves as an expert, but in everyone else's narrative. Talk on that. Can there be two heroes in a story? Like, you know, like, like look, so you and me are in, you are me are in a story right now. Yeah. You are the pro protagonist. Okay. <laughs> Just for the sake of making a, you are the pro protagonist. And then I come across, so let's say you're Batman and I'm Robin. Yeah. And I'm doing a lot of things that Batman can't do. I'm nimbler, younger, faster, quicker, whatever it is, but you've got the knowledge, you've got the wisdom. It's it's kind of like when Batman was beating up Bane or trying to beat up Bane and he was like, "You you fight like a younger man." Admirable but mistaken. I'm just like, yo, okay. Bane, you got some words, bro. Right, and so right. here it is in, the, in this moment where you know I'm I'm fighting with you, yeah. but that's not my story. Yeah. How how do we remove the people who are like the sidekicks in other people's narratives and set them on the path to realize you have a story of your own, even though that person does and will need support characters? How do you how do you separate but still integrate the two like how does that work out in your framework uh oh and there goes my camera hold on one second camera <laughs> ready okay, no worries, man. <laughs> that was we brought over uh the half an hour part my hey back. listen the timing though that, that that it cut out was pretty tight though <laughs> <laughs> this is like a all right okay um, okay I'm back. I'm back no we're still out okay uh, i can see you but it, it froze you can see me but it froze okay let's yeah. see can, hold on I'm gonna reset it here. We're still talking. Okay. We're live. We're live. This is live. Yep. All right. I'm gonna start I my camera. Hear you. What's What's up, world? Okay. okay I'm back. Um, You're good. Yeah. I was gonna change my camera back to uh, this link. There we go. All right. Okay. Upgraded. There we go. There we go. Live and living color. <laughs> um, good stuff. So I look at it as this, right? I realize I'm in mm. competition with no one but myself. And so, like, mm. let's say okay. I'm gonna jump through this Grand Canyon, and I'm, and I'm going from one part of the rim to the next. And what I've done along the way is I've run into a guy named Chris. Now, Chris, mm. at the same time, is on the same journey. We might have different mm. obstacles. We might have different backstories. But at the same time, we're trying to get to a similar destination, this feeling of getting to um, point Z. And I kind of say it gotcha. um, near, kind of near the end of the book, that a story is nothing uh, but the A through Z of point A to point B. And so okay. within this okay. A through Z framework, I meet you. Mm. Now, I'm not trying to be better than you. I'm not trying to beat your time. I'm literally right. just trying to get to the other side. However, in meeting you, okay. we, in a sense, may become each other's sidekicks. So we're still both heroes. Mm -hmm. We're both heroes in yeah. our own story. Um, but yeah. as we're feeding off of each other, we're also playing those sidekick roles. Mm -hmm. So okay. what I think happens is, one, we both have had a, a level of self-awareness enough to say, I'm going from one side of the, the Grand Canyon to the next. Rather okay. than saying, I'm going to watch someone else go from one side of the mm. game to the next. That's what we normally do. When we come okay. home from work, when we want yeah. to wind down, and you know, I say it in chapter one, it's the same mm. question that we've been saying since we've been children, little children. Mommy, yeah. daddy, tell me a story. Tell me yeah. how you got from one side of the canyon to the other. But don't put me right. in the canyon, but <laughs> I want to hear about how Chris got it. So we, get, yeah. we, we do the same thing when we get older. I want to see how right. this housewife got um, got her husband back or whatever. Don't put me yeah. in this situation, you know. <laughs> right, right, and so, right. And so we yeah. love that narrative. We love watching the people in the arena. We'll pay for mm. the premium seats in the arena, but we ourselves don't want to be in that stage because of the the Ooh. cost and the obstacles and the effort yeah. and the pressure yeah. from all the viewers. Mm. That's what prevents us from continuing to advance mm. our narrative. So, so listen here, listen here, because I'm, I'm pulling this part where you say the moments before bed are about processing narratives. You're so right. You're saying we're three, four years old, you know, mom, dad, tell me a story. And yet you say, we usually don't want that narrative to be our own. Ha. <sighs> so for those of us, and you say it, you mention it, 
we're Netflixing till we hit REM, <laughs> rapid eye movement, like, you know, it's playing in the background, Facebooking other, I, I really didn't think about it. And I haven't been one, at least as of late in like the last few years, especially, but to have social media be the last thing or other people's, because that's really what it is, right? Other people's posts, which are other people's stories to be the last thing that I'm thinking of. But I can remember a time when that was the thing. Yeah. And and I guess for me, for those who may not be able to resonate with that, for me, it's not even other people's stories. You know what it is for me now? What? what? My own work, bro. Mm. Like that. Mm. Oh my gosh. The anxiety of thinking about the next day versus, yeah. and if we're going to get into the day check versus just writing what needs to be done and end it. Yep. Close the story chapter for the day. Yep. yep. Let it go. Yep. Pay the taxes. Oh man, you talk about paying the taxes, which is which is sleep. Oh man, that was so okay. All right, all right, right. You got me excited. Okay, so so let's let's do this because you you say okay, attention has and always will be our greatest currency. Hence, teachers, parents telling us pay attention. Actually, it took me a while to catch that, so I had to read it again. I'm like, oh oh yeah, hey, Elroy, you are the the probably in the top three clever people with with puns and and just. Wittage. That's not a word, but wittage, bruh. Amen. Puns and wit. Like you are quick. You are quick on your feet and, and it and it shines through in the book. Okay. Okay. So I don't want to give away too much, but I want to give away enough for people to know, hey, listen, this is real. You yeah. mentioned, and this is how we're going to segue into chapter three of the book. So in chapter three, it's like everything before. Okay. So, okay. In the hero's journey, chapter stage seven, which yeah. is atonement with the father. Uh, they mentioned that everything before it leads up to that stage and everything after it flows from it, right? Mm -hmm. In your book, chapter three, which is dealing with the day check, everything that you've talked about, being lost, how to frame a story. Ah, oh, we didn't even get to the story spine yet, but that's okay. Maybe we can work our way in it because you did mention it a little bit. I saw you fit yeah. it in there in the beginning of the, <laughs> the beginning. Um, so everything meets up to a chapter three, and this is like practical. It's the most practical chapter in the book. This is how you take back your day. This is how you meter out. This is how you measure. This is how you make sure that you can have a, uh, for lack of a better word, um, a stable narrative on a daily basis, taking back your own story, so to speak. And everything after chapter three is just flowing out of it, finding the mission and like everything else is, okay. So walk us through a day check. Now, do I need to pull out the, the thing? Do I need to write some notes? Like, you know, actually I write out some math. Cause if we do, I will share my screen right now, Els. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let's do that. Let's let's oh, go ahead. Man, you're about to go there. Okay. Yes. And and then the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about my favorite movie because I, I definitely want us to to uh to deal to deal with that. Okay. okay. So All here right. we go. Break down for me the day check and just what that looks like and all of the math that's required in that. All right, so for instance, um, so today I got paid, right? It was a Wednesday before mm. Thanksgiving. I usually get paid every other Thursday. Uh, and so I got a paycheck. But I realized every day the same thing happens, you know, except it doesn't yeah. happen in money, it happens in minutes. And mm. uh, you know, a lot of times how you manage your, your money is very connected to how you manage your minutes. And so gotcha. if, if, you're, if you're used to being broke, right? If you're used to your bank account mm. being zero, if you see ten thousand dollars come into your bank account tomorrow, let's say somebody cash out for ten thousand dollars, you're gonna yeah. be so scared. You'll be thankful, but you'll be so scared that it won't be long mm. before that five-figure number turns right back into two or zero. Mm. Um, just okay. because you haven't wrapped your mind around the concept of abundance or of having the same thing okay. happens with time. When you have so mm. much time, a lot of times yeah. we're bored, and I've seen it a lot. It's like I'm bored. Tell me what to do. Yeah. Tell me where mm. to go. Tell me what to watch. We're, we're, we have yeah. so much of an abundance of minutes and attention. Mm. And we, we want to give it away because we're not used to being in abundance with that. So when you, when yeah. you take the concept of the, the day check every day, you get congratulations, mm -hmm. Chris. You got 1,440 minutes. You know, if none of us die today, and I hope none of us do, you get 1,440 minutes. And I like to say yeah. the question is, what are you doing with yours, right? Mm -hmm. The only mm -hmm. way I get a, a paycheck, Chris, um, and there's deductions out of my paycheck. Uncle Sam comes and takes his. Social Sec Security comes and takes theirs. Uh, healthcare yeah. comes and takes theirs. The same yep. thing. So um, okay. we get taxed based on our work. If you work an eight-hour day, mm. what eight times six? Uh, eight times sixty is forty-eight. 48 so that's four hundred and eighty uh -huh. out of your uh, from a nine to five. So then you subtract okay. that 
fourteen forty, right? Uh, let's say uh-huh. you sleep for eight hours a day. That's another um, what is it? Four hundred and eighty minutes. And so eight, eight, and eight. You're left with one third of the pizza, bro. And so you got four hundred and eighty minutes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's left, right? So now mm-hmm. the deductibles from this day check is four hundred eighty minutes. That's what you're left with after your taxes. Now that question is, how valuable to my life are these mm. four hundred eighty minutes? Because mm. within four hundred eighty minutes, I have to withstand a slew of phone calls, emails, yeah. television commercials, uh, yeah. you know, mom saying I don't call her enough, uh, WhatsApp messages, um, you know, m- my my sister, my my friends, mm. everything you know is is mm-hmm. clamoring for my attention. And based on how I decide to budget or guard those minutes is based on um, you know what level of success or how far I can advance myself in the journey based on how I use this time. Uh, but for most people, because they don't know who they are, they'll freely mm. give this time away. They're like, it's my 480. I don't really know what I'm doing with it yet because I don't know what my yeah. purpose is or whatever. So boom, yep, I'm gonna watch this show. And it's fine. Wow. Again, I'm not, wow. I'm not upset at anyone for escapism, but you know, they're like, boom, I'm yeah. gonna watch the show. I'll, 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 I'll watch this movie. I'll, you know, I'll spend time with my children, which is warranted and healthy. You know, um, mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not knocking that. But for me, it's yeah. pretty much saying be aware. Be very aware of those 480 minutes. And if you're asking for more yeah. time, you don't have enough time, audit yourself. Audit yourself. Look at your like day Where are my minutes audit going? Yourself. Are they going to video games? Mm-hmm. Are they are they going to, to TikTok? Are they going to Facebook? Why do yeah. I keep running out of time? Why why is my the, mm. why is the, the number of minutes in my account always reaching zero? Why does it feel like I never yeah. have enough? That comes so back. you mentioned, yeah, you know what? It does come back to that because you mentioned that you've never I don't I rarely, rarely, I think it was just in the very beginning, probably starting a business where I had to write an actual check. <clears throat> so we have the same experience. We've never really had to write many checks. Yeah. Um, but you do talk about the dread that there would probably be if you had to write one and it bounces. Oh, yeah. Talk to us about why our day checks bounce. What causes them to bounce? Uh, I think our day checks bounce when we overextend ourselves. And you know, mm-hmm. for me, I put it in the book, mm-hmm. I'm a recovering people pleaser. I, I would hate saying no to people. The level of anxiety and dread mm-hmm. from just having to tell people no felt like yeah. the rejection that I never wanted to receive myself. Remember me doing kindergarten and first grade in the same year? So even in yeah, first grade, yeah. I was still afraid of that rejection. Not even just by age, but even just by color. I was the only African-American in my own class. And so I was fighting yeah. to just be in the space. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you overextend yourself, you realize, oh, sure, I'll go do this, or I'll support you here, or or I'll spend time here. And you realize as you're spending time in, in this particular narrative, supporting somebody else, you yeah. overextended yourself, promising somebody else that you were going to support them, uh, you know, whether you're showing up yeah. in person um, mm-hmm. or financially. And next thing you know, you, mm-hmm. you have more events than minutes. And because you've overextended yourself and you haven't guarded your time or audited yourself in the best way, either telling people no at the um, the forefront that I'm sorry, I just can't, I can't uh, be there for you in this space right now. They may be upset and it is what it is, but it's your day check, right? It's your day check. Uh, So they may be upset, but at some point they'll respect it because you're valuing your minutes and they should know at some point, you know, you value them enough to uh, let them know you just can't be there for them in that time or be there for everyone all at the same time. So what has shifted? What has shifted between us talking now and us talking eight months ago when you had to change a lot of your production um, for some of the the television shows that you were doing at the time, such as uh, the Hope Channel? And um, something has changed in you, sir. What is uh, it? I don't know. I cut my hair. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, <laughs> time time has gone by, Chris. I mean, a lot of time has gone by. And, you know, within the COVID year, I think you're just really thinking about what's truly, truly important. Uh, you know, what really, really matters. And I think that's come for a lot of people. People have lost loved ones. Uh, they've lost friends and family members. And they're starting to self-reflect, especially around the fall season. Everybody does it. They're getting like, I'm cutting this person off. I'm cutting that person off. I'm getting this out of my life. This next year is going to be my year. Like, it's the same kind of cyclical phrase over and over again. Um, it's, so for me, it's it's been one, just this constant, never-ending cycle of self-reflection. Uh, but yeah. then this constant cycle of having to accept who I am and where I am right now and saying that that's okay. And not necessarily, again, needing the currency of other people's opinions to um, to pay for my uh, my comfort. Okay. Okay. And, 
I can tell. I can tell the shift, sir. I just want you to know the way that you have guarded your time in this season versus pre on the onset of COVID has right. changed. So you have, you, you have, you've taken your own medicine. You are practicing what you are preaching. And, and I love to see that, man. I love to see that because you just didn't, put, it was almost as if as soon as the book came out, you're like, okay, now I really need to do <laughs> what I'm talking about. And, um, and I, and I can see it. Um, I'm pretty sure Mika can, like, I know that your intention of wanting to guard your day, guarding your day doesn't just protect you, it protects the people that you love. And as a matter of fact, it just yeah. doesn't protect them. It benefits them. Because yes. now you can give your best self, not just to you, but to those who um, immediately and maybe even long-term are impacted by the decisions and the actions that you make. Listen, man, we we can't, ah, okay, it's 437. I hey, want us to be. Go, man. You good? Hey, I just need to reset one note. There ain't nothing but a thing. Microsoft giving me problems. All I need to do is reboot this sucker. What I want us to do is I want us to practice the story spine yeah. with my favorite movie, The Matrix. So let me go ahead. Um, let me let me restart one note because you know Microsoft be playing games with brother man. I don't be liking Microsoft like that. Yeah, you said Microsoft. You know. <laughs> you don't let that go. <laughs> Would you, you imagine me talking about Microsoft, man? I got an Android now. I'm using Office. Oh. Things have changed, right? I know. You I know. Android, bro? Oh, my. <laughs> I got an Android. Chris, I thought I knew you, man. <laughs> I, people change. <laughs> people change, right? People change. Uh, it was, you know, it was Google. I blame Google. I just be became part of the Google environment. I was like, you know what? Let me just go all in and just switch to the hardware too. So I'm going to put him in here, Matrix Story Spine. Let me share my screen. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go from the from the one day, no, not from the one day, once upon a time and work our way all the way through. Okay, yeah. let's see here. Let's share this right quick. And all right. You're going to have to make this happen because you're going to have to refresh me. It's been a while since I watched The Matrix. I, I know yeah, the okay. I know the major tenets, but yeah, I can give you the the parts of the spine, and then you can go and fill them in. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, man, it's been a while since I watched The Matrix too. But okay, we <laughs> this out. So the first one, right? For yeah. so for those of you that are trying to understand, oh man, oh man, what was that? Hold on, give me a second here. Give me a second oh. here, Alice. It's kind of Neo. What are you doing? Ah, oh. uh, bruh. You know, okay. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It's not even like registering properly. Story. See, I have terrible handwriting, but this right here, it ain't, it ain't me, bro. It's it's something else. Okay, so the first thing, yeah, we're gonna talk about once upon a time. Okay, once upon a time, yeah. Once upon a time, that that is an I. Okay. okay. <laughs> so what would our once upon a time for the Matrix be? Um, uh, so you know he's this he's this computer programmer in the beginning, yeah. right? He's yeah. he's uh, you know he's in the cubicle, um, nine to five job. He's yeah. also a hacker at night. Yeah. So what would we? And I'll just kind of you know do it in a notative fashion, so I won't be writing paragraphs here because we'd be here all day. But um, are we characterizing who he is? Or is it is it the yeah. setup, or is yeah. that in the end every day? Like what part is? So once upon a time, it's the setting of the story. So, you know, when you plop okay. the character. So, would we say, okay, gotcha. So, we're plopping him in. So, would we say, once upon a time, there was there was a cubicle working computer engineer who moonlighted as an illegal hacker? <laughs> or is that too much? I don't uh, know. It's a bit much. You know, you can turn in a bit. Uh, <laughs> so, like you want to okay. give him a name. You, so, you're identifying, the, you know, the, okay. the, some of the characteristics, but give him a name. So people can connect okay, so, with his character. Right. Mr. So Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Yep. We know that that's him. Um, computer engineer. Yeah, what's and... my computer engineer named Mr. Anderson? There you go. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. So once upon a time, there's a computer engineer named Mr. Anderson. All yeah. right. And every day. And here you go. And every day. Okay. This is, so this is this... the culture. Uh, okay. Are, habits and behaviors that Mr. Anderson has repeated so many times that it's just considered normal by either him mm. or the community around him. So this is okay. his job, uh, his behaviors. Like if he goes into work and screams every day, which we don't know, we don't see that in the film, uh, you know, right. that is in every day, but we do see him 
um, I believe at some point, like you said, in the cubicle. So on every day, yeah, just unhappy. Yeah. Right. 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 And every day, Mr. Anderson was at his computer, um, bored, unhappy, w- wondering if there was something more in cubicle. Yeah. Now he also moonlighted as like the 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 hacker guy at night too. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, if you know calligraphist, bro, just 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 should be the number. Something <laughs> more. <laughs> okay. Oh um, this, bro, listen, it's 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 horrendous. It, okay. It, Bartley condensed was. <laughs> <laughs> listen, it's it's nasty. Okay. <laughs> then, so after the end every day. Yeah. Then we have. <clears throat> So one day this this message one shows day. up on the screen and it's blinking mm. up. It says uh-huh. Neo, is it Neo wake up? I can't remember. It's just blinking. Yeah. Green. Yep. Okay. It says wake up Neo. Yeah. Um, and then something else, and then it says to follow the white rabbit. All right, white so, rabbit. Um, which is an illusion, if those of y'all don't know, that's an illusion to um uh, Alice in Wonderland, but you know, a lot of people don't know that. I actually had to do a thing in school about that whole, you know, whole breakdown. Okay, so then number four, Microsoft is not playing nice again because now it's okay. There we go. It's, it's better. So, yeah, number is, four could be, um, it can either be because split of up that and because of that. So he wakes up. Oh, okay. hey, what's up, Ben? <laughs> ben, gotcha. Lord, all the white rabbit. Here you go. <laughs> Frederick. All of A. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so what we're looking at here is he now chooses to wake up. He's following the right rabbit. And so now there's this chain of events, right? Yep. Obstacles. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned in your book that usually yeah. it doesn't have to be always bad conflict. There is right. good conflict. Right. So would you say that Neo faces good conflict and then we transition into bad conflict? Or because, you know, he does take the red pill and then, you know, uh, he gets ejected out of the Matrix. Yeah, I would, I would say so. I mean, you know, no harm has come to Neo at this point in the story. You know, Neo's mm. Neo's not, uh, you know, dead. There's no there's no uh, major life risk here. But maybe there is, and maybe that's where the good conflict mm. is. This this call for okay. more, and that's yeah. pretty much the main framework. There's always this call to something greater than what you're currently doing. And whether you are at a cubicle like Neo, or at a light yeah. table, or you know, in a school, wherever you are, there's there's this there's this huge desire for something more. So, yeah. So would, 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 because of that, <clears throat> would that also include him meeting agent Smith? He, um, because or I'm, is that, uh, yeah. So that would be in the, okay. in the, the, because of that would be everything that happens in the movie. Once he takes, uh, that, that pill and wakes up again, or once he wakes okay. up from that pill. Yeah. Great. And then after that, I don't know what just happened just now, but okay. And then what happens because after because of that? So it's three because of that. Uh, you know. Okay. Which, so I put here, he takes the red pill, he leaves the matrix, he runs into Agent Smith. So. Yeah. And there's another because of, and because of that, you know, something uh, else happens. And then because of that, okay. something else happens. Gotcha. So, so the three that I have there are also going to be three more on top of that, is what you're saying. Uh, yeah, because of that, he takes the pill. Because of that, he he meets Agent Smith. Least, uh, or, yeah. or does he the Matrix the training yeah. system? Yeah, there's a lot that goes on. But yes, he also trains. He learns Kung Fu first, and then he yeah 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 yeah. yeah. So he's going this through this true. conflict of him thinking he can't do enough. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, of him going through this training, and I lo- right. Morpheus, I I love the concept of Morpheus. Yeah. Uh, go go for it, man. Go 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 ahead. No, no, I was gonna say, and then he runs into the Oracle. Um, there's a ah oh, man. There's a lot. There's a lot of because of that, man. Yeah, there, <laughs> Which ones do we pick? There aren't any cat. You don't have to put a cap on the book because of that, because it pretty much are okay. the, the series of events that lead to this huge climax or pinnacle, um, for better or worse, which is the until gotcha. finally. That's the next okay. stage until finally. So, so let's do this. So it, maybe the until finally is when he meets Agent Smith. Maybe because he's really kind of training until then, right? Well, uh, the Agent Smith may still be in the because of that because he fights he okay. fights Smith right um, at the, the end first time and he loses and he yeah. loses, but then he comes. Are you going through the entire movie? Or are you just going through the 
like the first, just, just the first one. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, just the first. That's the first movie. Yeah, just the first one. Yeah, yeah. We we not saw yeah, so, uh, we, we. So if I remember, he he at this point has become so confident in his, in his ability to be unplugged from the Matrix that whatever is coming mm -hmm. to him. Oh man, Chris brought it to, like whatever is coming from whatever angle, he's able to see yeah. it slow motion. And yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. Component of that, man, because there's so many issues, I think. So I'm gonna tell the audience real quick, there's so many issues in our world that in the form of Agent Smith that is literally there yeah. to, to stop us, impede our progress. He's the villain, right? Yeah. He's, you know, that hero yes, he He's the villain. He shows up either as just himself or he multiplies himself over and over and over again to the point where you feel like you have no chance. But at some yeah. point, based on Neil's understanding of who he is in this larger narrative, yeah. he is able to slow down the problems that come to him, where no matter how fast those problems seem to come, he slows down and is literally just able to slowly kind of just turn, block, yes. and that kind of, go for it, go for it. Go for okay, it. Okay, so there's this part, there's this part where he asks, okay, this might be the until finally, he asks Morpheus, were you telling me that I can dodge bullets? And then Morpheus says, I'm telling you that one day, you won't have to. <laughs> Let me go back now. Whoa. Oh, he's like he won't even have to dodge. He just be like, because remember that's what he does at the end. He just holds right. up his hands like, mm -mm, stop. Right. So I'm, I'm gonna put here. I already did. He owns the matrix, so to speak, right? Like he is the anomaly. He, yo, know, he bends the matrix to his will, right? And then you know you get to the third movie and you realize or the second one and you realize it was like that on purpose. But that's a whole other situation. Oh. We're not gonna go there. <laughs> so okay. So until finally, and then what is after the until finally? I think that one's gonna be a little bit easier, right? Um, uh, yeah, so until final is usually that, that climax part of the movie or, um, and what we haven't spoken to, um, of is that the story spine, there are a lot of smaller story spines within a larger story spine. And so, yes. um, and this is yes. what I've been alluding, um, to, uh, so until finally yeah, he's able to, you know, beat agent Smith. And ever since that day, you know, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Anderson or Neo, if you will, comes into this new realization of who he yeah. is in this larger yeah. world. And you kind of see him flying yes. up. You know, at the end of that first movie. So. Yeah, he flies. I can't spell. Okay, so, okay. Flies is like terrible, but okay. So now let's take a look at this. So, once upon a time, mm -hmm. there was a man named Mr. Anderson who was a computer engineer. And every day he was bored and unhappy in his cubicle working nine to five, wondering if there was something more. One day, a message shows up on his screen that tells him to wake up and follow the white rabbit. Now, because of that, he meets Morpheus for the first time, someone that he's always wanted to uh, to meet and <clears throat> thought that he was a myth, but he's really real. And Morpheus gives him the option of taking a pill that would have him to exit the matrix. So he takes the red pill and because of that, he leaves the matrix and because of that, he trains and because of that, he meets Agent Smith until finally one day, Oh, he, he says just then he then he fails, he gets beat until finally he owns the Matrix for lack of a better term. Right now, mm -hmm. he beats Agent Smith, and ever since that day, he flies like a G. Oh, <laughs> that's my mama out, right? <laughs> so, yo, the story spine is so good, man. It is such yeah. a great tool. And I used to use it uh, literally just making up stories um, back when my wife and I were dating. You know, I think of random stories and you, you'll see, uh, you know, a concept about some random story about Tiny the Elephant yeah. that I literally just put in a framework. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I was like, is this Horton Hughes a who? No, it's a totally different. It was It was kind of, it had like a flavor of Wreck-It Ralph. Like Wreck-It Ralph, yes. Wreck -It, yes. Uh, but it's, it, was, it was cool, man. It was cool. I can just imagine you sitting down and just making this up literally in like maybe 15 minutes. I, I almost guarantee you it didn't take you that long. Like you have a brilliant mind, bro. I know you I know you didn't struggle. You didn't struggle. I know. Oh, uh, Chris, don't do that to me, man. No. It, was a little long, it was a little longer than 15, but you know, the frameworks are the same. Exactly. The yeah. frameworks are the it same is. from the time we're, child, we're children, you know? Right, right. The characters right. have all these challenges. They're goofy. They're they're dorky. Yeah. They're not always wanted. They're not always loved. They're yeah. they're what Disney would say um, back in the day because you know this isn't uh -huh. how we view women today. But it, it, be the, the princess yeah. or the, the girl locked away in the tower, hoping for more. It's the you same. know, Luke Skywalker on the farm in this search for for adventure. You know, right. the Shire. Right. It, it's it's these people with yeah. 
dreams far beyond the, the village or communities that they're in. So. Okay. Before before e cam, uh, before before the cam knocks knocks us out again, I don't know how much time we got, <laughs> how much time we got, but I want you to talk about this idea of how we can dream like that in real life. Um, reflect on the people that we look up to, the people that we might aspire to be, and like, man, how did they get there? And you tell me, you tell those of us who are still watching, how similar is looking at the movies that we love to watch and how they just dreamed big or had this huge vision and just one day it actually happened versus those of us right now who feel stuck and they're just like nah that's that's that can't be real this is real life it, it doesn't work that way what do you tell to them this is how we're going to end this thing what do you tell them about their story and how they can and should live their life well first of all i'm not exactly going to tell them how they should live their life okay uh, Okay. Okay. In the in the context in the context of adopting like the day check. Let me let me clean it up a little bit. Let me, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Be aware. So let me see. I'll I'll kind of run through each uh, chapter the way I do in the book. Um, you got to understand that we are or at some point lost. That's chapter one. I got it all here. You got to understand story and where we are in our narrative. That's chapter two. You got to understand that context. Chapter three. Got to be grateful for the value of your time. Like be extremely mm -hmm. grateful for it every day. One thousand four hundred forty minutes. Yep, your work takes some. Your 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 subconsciousness takes some. But be aware of that remaining um the remaining minutes. Be aware of the cycles in your story and how to use them to your advantage. We didn't touch on chapter four, uh, which is the knowledge cycle. So um, and you know what? I'll matter of fact, I'll stop right there. That 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 uh, teasing part of it. Four A's okay. in the knowledge cycle. Uh, awareness. Mm -hmm. Gotta be aware of, of where you are and what you're trying to do or who you're trying to become. Be aware of your situation. Acquisition. Start mm -hmm. acquiring the people, the artifacts, the information, uh, the spaces. Uh, start to acquire that information in order for you to gain more knowledge that will lead you, uh, you know, further into your journey. That's Application. Good. Get past mm -hmm. that analysis by paralysis because knowledge mm -hmm. is not power. I've heard this before. It's uh, applied knowledge is power. And so you have to apply what you've learned at some point. And then there goes my camera. The last <sighs> stage is audit. We're good, we're good, let me get it back. The last stage is audit. You've, okay. After you've gone through everything, after you have yeah. uh, applied it, how, what did you learn? Uh, what worked, what didn't work? And as you begin to audit, you become aware again yeah. of what you need to do. I love that, because it's a cycle. It's a cycle. Just it's because you've finished the, the narrative, <clears throat> it doesn't mean that it's over. You've hit a final destination. You just keep, you repeat the cycle all over again. And you right. take, like you said, the new knowledge, the application, the auditing, and all of that, and you apply it now to a new level of awareness. Ah, oh, man, I love that. By the way, hey, if y'all don't know, y'all thought that I was good at, with alliteration, y'all check out that book. My man has seven W's of how he runs his life. Um, we didn't get to talk about the daily routines. Y'all just got to check it out because, um, yeah, it, it is crucial. As a matter of fact, I can guarantee you that the moment that I started doing this a few years ago in Elroy as well, we started implementing routines in our life when we realized how not just important our time was, but what was going to be necessary for us to go to the next level. There's just some things in life that we do not need to fuss over or try to stumble over, try to figure out. Routines make it real simple get straight to the point and just handle the business. Um, hey, listen, Els, I appreciate you, man, because you really did it. And I think that this crowning act is the last the last comment that shows up. I think this is just beautiful. This is poetic, how everything just pops up the way that it does. Yo, Samantha says, two really great philosophers, Elroy and Chris. Oh, What's up? Man. You know, I'm proud of you, man, but not only am I proud of you, I am actually excited for the next journey that you're gonna take. I'm reading the book and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I need to be doing that. There was a time when you thought that you were taking notes from me, bruh, the student has now become the teacher. Wow, mm -hmm. bro, here, I still am. <laughs> I am forever, just know that I'm forever in the space of learning. I am both, uh, if you consider it to be Mr. Miyagi, I am him and I'm Daniel-san, all in one, so. You can say all what you wanna say, 
we are gonna pour into you the affirmation that you need so that you can go ahead and write that next New York Times bestseller. Oh, wow. Dude, no, in all, in all sincerity though, man, this was really great. I'm still working my way through it. I'm not trying to rush through it because it's very practical information. Okay, so Denise definitely did drop the link, but I'm also gonna do it on YouTube as well so that we can, yeah, I, I don't know if you have a short link else, but if you don't get one and then we can just do a whole nother- um, Yeah, sure, when I drop uh, it. In the front the oh yeah you did okay cool let me let me go ahead and copy that before we before we head off and so that people can can grab that as well okay cool so now it should be on facebook and youtube and i think it should be on uh dude periscope too i'm just all over the place so dude yeah 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 else man once again i appreciate you man this is good like yeah. the book is good yeah man come on i need to read it Embrace it and applied it. He, my man, said, "Applied knowledge is that what you said? Applied knowledge is That's power." That's not mine. Again, I want to give credit to. I heard that you know, but yeah, applied knowledge is power. Oh man, that's that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful, man. All right, Els. So I appreciate you. Listen, this is, I guess, the inaugural you know book club, and you like the number one book. So, bro, I mean, how 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 good can it get? <laughs> <laughs> no, we are honored, man, to just be able to glean from your knowledge and your wisdom and then to just write it out for us to understand and to apply. Brother, you wanted some things, man. So, hey, listen, guys, for those of you that have any questions, comments for Els, link up with them. What's the best place for them to find you, Elroy? Um, besides, okay. Yeah, IG, Elroy K. Byam. Uh, it's right there. You can get me if you got any questions uh, about the book. And um, yeah, okay. that's the best place. Cool, cool. Els? Love you, man. Love you too, bro. All right, later.